Welcome to Fire Technique, the movie. Please make sure you've read the introductory page to this technique. It includes information that will help you get more out of it. Okay, let's build a fire. To begin this technique, go up to File, drag down to New to create a new document. We'll set our document size to 1117 pixels wide and 790 pixels high. Resolution at 266 pixels per inch, mode RGB color, contents white, then click OK. Now go up to Image, Adjust, and down to Invert to flip the white background to black. We're going to use white text as the base element for the fire, so I'll activate the text tool and then set the foreground color to white. You can do this quickly by clicking on the default colors chip and then the exchange colors chip. Select your font at 85 point and we'll use centered text. I'll click near the bottom of the document to set the insertion point for the text and then type in fire. Hit enter to render the text and then if necessary activate the move tool then just click drag to reposition. Make sure to position the text near the bottom center of the document like I've done in this example. It's important for alignment purposes over the next few steps. Now make a new layer at the top of the stack by clicking on the Create New Layer icon. This will create layer 1. Now hold down Option for the Mac or Alt for the PC. Go up to Layer and drag down to Merge Visible. This will merge all visible layers to layer 1 while leaving the original underlying layers intact. If all the layers merged, you release the Option or Alt key too soon. Next, go up to Edit, Transform, Rotate 90 degrees, Counterclockwise. Now run a Filter, Stylize, Wind. Set the method to Wind, the direction from the right, and click OK. Then we'll repeat this filter three more times. Now that we're done with the wind filtration, go to Edit, Transform, Rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Now go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Set the radius to 7.5 pixels and click OK. To apply some color to layer 1, go to Image, Adjust, Hue Saturation, and then click on the Colorize button in the lower right corner of the dialog box. Set the hue to 40, the saturation to 100, and then click OK. We need to duplicate layer 1, so drag it down to the Create New Layer icon to create layer 1 copy. And then go up to Image, Adjust, Hue Saturation one more time, but this time set the hue to minus 40 and click OK. So now we have our two primary fire colors residing on separate layers. Layer 1 is handling the yellow, layer 1 copy is handling the red. To intermingle these, we'll use a mode. The mode menu is located at the top of the layers palette where it says Normal. Click on Normal and drag down to Color Dodge mode and release. By setting layer 1 copy to Color Dodge mode, we got the color effect we were looking for, but this effect is currently residing on two layers. We need this to be a single layer for the next step, so go up to Layer and drag to Merge Down. When you merge, Layer 1 copy will disappear as it renders the composite effect into Layer 1. Okay, now for the fun part. To distort the flames, go to Image and drag to Liquify. When the dialog box opens, activate the Warp tool by pressing the W key on your keyboard. The reduced size of this movie capture doesn't allow me to show it to you here, but it's in the upper leftmost corner of the dialog box. Set its brush size to 50, and set the brush pressure to 40. Now just click and drag from the top of the text with a bit of mouse wiggle as you drag up. When you've finished your first run, Go back and set the brush size down to 30 and the brush pressure to 35. 
Then go back and apply a second run of distortions with a smaller brush. To keep this demo relatively small, I'm not going to take it to the detail that I might normally. But if you want more detail in your flames, just reduce the brush size and pressure again and give it a third or even a fourth run. If you make a mistake, you can use the Reconstruct tool to the left. It essentially allows you to paint back to the previous state. The Undo function also works from the keyboard. That's Control z on the PC or Command-Z on the Mac. When you're happy with your distortion, just click OK to apply the distortion to the image. I'm not going to pursue this here, but in the optional step 6b of the web page technique, I refer to a saved distortion mesh. To access this feature, you hold down the shift key when you apply a liquify. This tells Photoshop to save the distortion mesh out separately. So if you're unhappy with your work after you've left liquify, you can simply undo, and then go back into liquify holding down the shift key, and have the previous distortion applied but now it's fully reconstructable, back to its original state. So if you're unhappy with your distortion work, you don't have to start over from scratch. Okay, now we're going to take our original fire text layer and duplicate it to make fire copy. And then drag fire copy up above layer one. Now we need to fill the fire copy text layer with black. So click on the default colors icon, and then hold down option delete for the Mac, or Alt Backspace for the PC. The Backspace or Delete key I'm referring to here is located in the upper right hand corner of your keyboard block. Now we need to duplicate layer 1 by dragging it down to the Create New Layer icon. This will result in layer 1 copy. Take layer 1 copy then drag it up to the top of the stack. Now go to the Mode menu and drag from Normal down to Screen Mode. This will stack the brightness of layer 1 copy against the brightness of all the underlying layers. Add a layer mask to layer 1 copy by clicking on the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers palette. Activate the Gradient tool. Then go to the Default Colors icon and click on it. And then go select a linear white to black gradient. Now click drag from the top of the text to the bottom. This will hide the foreground flame effect on the lower half of the text. Activate the Smudge tool, select a 65 pixel soft edged brush, and set the brush pressure to 70%. And then click drag again from the top of the text down towards the bottom. The bit of mouse wiggle. This will make the flames look as though they're coming down through the text. Click drag from the bottom up to take flames out. Now we need to make an overall glow. So go down to the Create New Layer icon and click to Create Layer 2. Next, hold down the Option key for the Mac or the Alt key for the PC and go up to Layer and drag down to Merge Visible. This will merge all viewed layers to layer 2, but it leaves all the underlying layers intact. Set layer 2's mode to screen and its opacity to 60%. Now to distribute this out, I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and here we want to set our radius pretty high. We'll take this all the way up to 50 pixels and click OK. To create the effect of a reflection on the floor, click on the Create Layer icon, which will result in Layer 3. Then hold Option for the Mac or Alt for the PC and go up to Layer and drag down to Merge Visible. Set Layer 3's mode to Screen and its opacity to 60%. For the next step, we'll need some room to work, so zoom back a couple of times so that you've got some gray non-document space around your image. To do this, activate the Zoom tool and then hold down Alt for the PC or Option for the Mac and click in the image. To use Layer 3 as a reflection, we need to flip it down underneath the fire text. Go up to Edit and drag down to Free Transform. Locate the top center bounding box handle and click drag it down below the bottom of the bounding box. Then move to the new upper handle and drag it up so it looks like a reflection.
When you are happy with the result, hit the Enter key or click on the checkbox in the options bar above. Finally, to take a good look at our image, I'll hit the F key a couple of times to display it against black, and then hit the Tab key to hide the palettes. The Zoom tool is still active from before, so I'll just click a few times to magnify the image. There you have it, Fire. Entirely synthetic, built from scratch. For enhancements on this technique, please refer to the Fire Technique webpage. Well, there you go. Have fun making fire, and don't forget to show me your work. If you have any questions or suggestions to offer, please post them up at the PhotoshopTechniques.com forum in the Fire Techniques section. Thank you for visiting PhotoshopTechniques.com.